Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am filming a massive book unhaul. So truth be told, in a dream situation, I would get another shelf to put right here so I didn't have to unhaul a lot of these books. But I think I would still be running out of room and if I'm honest with myself, there are a lot of books on my shelf that I don't see myself revisiting. I am planning to, I think, sell a lot of these books to half price books in hopes that maybe I can get a little bit of money back for them because I did buy all of these with my own money. And so that would be lovely if I'm able to get something back for them. But anyways, enough rambling. I think these are mainly in order. Sorry if there's some random bips and bops that are not in order, but we're gonna start out with romance. So we have Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This sounded like a very rompy, fun romance, but it's just been on my shelves for four years now. And so I think I have to pass it on. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren and Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. I did read this. This was a very fun little um, holiday rom com -y book. I just don't see myself revisiting it. Next up, we have a young adult mystery series, which is the Study in Charlotte series. I really, really actually enjoyed these books. They are very fun. They're a spin off of Sherlock Holmes following a um, female detective named Charlotte Holmes, and it takes place at a boarding school. I enjoyed them when I read them, but the series is over and I'm not going to reread them. These are very much not in order, but this is the Mysterious Benedict Society series. I did read the first one in this and enjoyed it, but while I like some middle grade titles, I just felt that I wasn't connecting with this as much as I would like to for this amount of investment that I would need to be putting into a book series. I have heard really excellent things about the TV adaptation, so I might take a look at that in the future. The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. For some reason, I don't really connect with Megan Miranda's writing. I wish I did because she's written so many mystery books, but it just didn't really resonate with me. Kind of the same story for The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Read it. I think I gave it three stars. Age of Ice by Deep D. Kapoor. I have a reading blog of this. <laughs> it was just too action-based for me. I'm kind of a touchy-feely reader where I like a lot of emotional descriptive scenes, and I don't think that this quite had a lot of those things, although lots of people really love this, so I think there will be someone out there that's very excited to see this title. Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. Arsenic and Adobo by Mia Manansala. I think this was the first book in a cozy mystery series. Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. Hope Rides Again by Andrew Schaefer. This is a mystery novel where Obama and Biden are the central characters. I'm too stressed about the election to think about this. And so I'm passing it on. Two very, very hyped mystery books that I just did not connect with. The first was First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. Um, this was loved. But for some reason, I just couldn't connect with these characters. Same with the last thing he told me um, by Laura Dave. I just... I don't know, like for some reason, this story just didn't grip me. There are two books by Renee Dunfield in here, The Enchanted, which I never actually read, um, but then The Child Finder, which I did read. This was a mystery novel set in a wintry place. That's all I remember about it. I think it has a lost child in it, partially guessing that because of the title. Bury Your Dad by Louise Penny. I am, of course, continuing on with the Three Pines series, but this is hardback and the rest of them are paperback. And for some reason, I just like have to have the paperback set of these books. And so passing this one on. Finally, The Whisper Man by Alex North. I read this four years ago. I read it close to when it came out. I enjoyed it at the time, but I just haven't really thought about it since and I haven't picked up anything else by this author. So I'm going to pass this along as well. A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I absolutely love the Diviner series, but I just have never felt the desire to pick up this series. I think it is set in a boarding school, Spence Academy in London. I don't know. It's just never gripped me. Also, why is there a price tag on the back for $499? We have The Shining by Stephen King. The only reason that I'm getting rid of this one is because we have two copies. Tyler and I did a buddy read of The Shining several years ago, and I just don't think we need two copies of the book. Call of the Wild and White Fang by Jack London. I picked this up for a challenge where I was reading books from the early 1900s, like 1900 to 1910, and I just got burnt out of the challenge. <laughs> 
This book is gorgeous, Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. Haven't read it, has been on my shelf for six years. So I think it's time to pass on to somebody who is more excited to read this one. A few random nonfiction titles, Zubiquity uh, by Barbara Natterson Horowitz and Catherine Bowers. This is about diseases in animals and what we can learn about human disease from studying animal disease and like which animals get certain diseases. I did read this. I really, really enjoyed it, but I don't see myself picking it up again. Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. This is about, is her name Elizabeth Holmes? Yes, Elizabeth Holmes, who um, is known for making this company that promise that it could get blood tests with one prick of your finger, similar to like a glucose check, but it was all a scam. And this is kind of a true crime book about that. I tried to read this at one point and just couldn't like get interested in it. I found the writing a little bit hard to digest. Although I do find this story and Elizabeth Holmes to be kind of a fascinating and terrifying person. Strengths-Based Leadership by Don Clifton. This was for a work conference. It served its purpose and it's time to pass it on. The Chocolate Cookbook. Oh my god, this has a bite mark out of it. And that's just the like packaging. I think that's so incredible. But we just have so so many cookbooks. And I don't think I've ever made someone something from this. So maybe someone else will very much love this one and enjoy the bite mark as much as I have. The Air Fryer Cookbook, 550 Recipes for Every Day. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I picked this up when I first started BookTube back in 2018. Um, it was one of my initial like BookTube books and I have still never read it. I feel that I'm more interested in mystery thrillers and literary fiction at this point. And so young adult fantasy isn't as intriguing to me. Maybe one day I will pick this series up, but I will probably do it with a library book if I do, just so that I'm not investing in the physical books if I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. Kiss of Deception, also by Mary E. Pearson. Sorry, I didn't know that this was by the same author as Dance of Thieves or I would have put them together. Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. I just have one random hardback Hunger Games book. I have read the whole series, but I feel like if I'm going to invest in getting all the books for my shelf at some point, I will probably just buy the paperback box set rather than having one random hardback and the rest paperback. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Again, an early book to book from 2018, which I have still not read. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I absolutely love this cover. And this book definitely gives a lot of dark academia vibes. It takes place at Yale. Um, but again, I haven't picked it up and it's been six years. So it's time for someone else to enjoy it. And finally, Refuge by Dina Nairi. This was a book about refugees in, I want to say the Netherlands. Yes, Amsterdam. Proud of myself for that. Really enjoyed this book. I picked it up maybe seven years ago. Um, I have not picked anything else up by this author, um, but never revisited it in that time. Also this cover, phenomenal. All right, guys, that is my very lengthy unhaul video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the books maybe that I'm drifting away from to make space for books that are sparking a little bit more joy on my shelves. And who knows, maybe I will still get a bookshelf for back here because I am still out of shelf space despite unhauling all of these books, but it feels good to just have a bit of a shelf refresh. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.